Hello, you're listening to episode 238, where we're chatting about how to get up and keto faster, including how to go about ramping up your intake of fat and therefore reducing your carbohydrates. Now, I'm going to be sharing a lot of personal details about how I stopped eating so many carbs, especially at the beginning of my keto journey. Now, we are rewinding the clock all the way back to July 2014. So to help me along this, I'm actually going to be reading from my very first keto program, The Keto Beginning, which I wrote back in 2014, refreshed in 2017, and then again in 2018 as more studies and information became available in the keto space. A lot has changed since 2014. So if you want more details or if you want to grab your copy you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash begin. And if you have questions about today's content, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. You can also catch up on previous podcast episodes and the notes from today's show by going to ketodietpodcast.com. Okay, let's do this thing. Hey, I'm Leanne Vogel, and you're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. I've put together a free 21-page guide on achieving weight loss on your keto diet if nothing is working. Did you know imbalanced hormones are generally at the core of all struggles that women face when it comes to our weight? Grab your free guide at ketoforwomen.com to get the steps you need to overcome the hurdles standing in your way. Thanks so much for listening, and let's get started with the show. So let's get started. How to naturally reduce your intake of carbs. The first step to reducing the amount of carbohydrates you're eating is to unfriend sugar. If you're still consuming the white stuff, make the switch to options like unpasteurized honey, maple syrup, and coconut sugar. Now, I recommend this because if you go from eating all that white stuff to completely cutting it out, chances are you're not going to have success. Like, that's a big jump. That's like going for your first run and then joining the Olympics. (laughs) You know, that's, that's a huge jump. So instead of like stressing yourself out, start small. And once you've totally rocked that transition, you can begin to play with adding alcohol-free stevia to your drinks and sweetening your homemade baked goods with only fruit like medjool dates or applesauce or bananas. And for a deliciously inspiring example of a strategy, you can go to the Google machine and type in coconut water sorbet or vegan caramel apple stacks. And you'll see some of these recipes that aren't completely low carb, but way lower in carbohydrates than your average snack. Now, it might seem really hard to believe, but there will come a day in the course of your keto journey when your sweet tooth will begin to be satisfied by fruits alone. Enough so that you'll no longer need sweeteners like stevia or xylitol. But remember, Like so much of this process, this will take time. This is not a race to the finish line. It's about making lifelong changes by taking a series of smaller steps one day at a time. Really honor this and being kind and patient with yourself is the key to your success. Now, you might be thinking, why would I want to rely on fruit? My stance over the years um, has changed. You know, when I started keto in 2014, even through to 2017, I'd tell you to add stevia to everything. Load up that monk fruit, add xylitol. I mean, in 2014, uh, monk fruit wasn't really a thing. But now I see the value in just if you are looking for whole food nutrition, I got to tell you, making a batch of keto muffins with half a banana to sweeten it, I feel like is so much better than using a completely empty void of any nutrient cup of xylitol or a couple dashes of stevia. Now, the second step is one that you can do at the same time as you gradually reduce your sugar intake. Make friends with low carb vegetables and herbs. Okay, so you're lowering your sugar. You're also looking at low carb vegetables for the first time. Like, hmm, how can I use parsley or chives, cilantro, rosemary, basil, thyme? Foods like sprouts, greens, like lettuce, spinach, chard, collards, mustard greens, kale, bok choy, bamboo shoots, celery, radishes, seaweed, mushrooms, avocado. Oh, I'm getting hungry just thinking of all these tasty treats. 
jicama, cabbage, sauerkraut, okra, cucumber, green beans, fennel, cauliflower. Okay, so we're cruising in the Bahamas right now and I have zero access to fresh food. And I am so envious that you can go to the grocery store right now and pick up like broccoli or bell peppers or zucchini or summer squash or green onions. Okay, this is a huge list, right? These are all the things that you get to have fun with and play around with. Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, eggplant, artichokes, turnip, pumpkin, rutabaga, spaghetti, squash, celery root, carrots, onions, leeks, and don't forget the water chestnuts. You can really learn how to love their flavors and how to enjoy them and prepare them so that you enjoy them. Like you might want to go on Google and type um, low carb recipes with mushrooms or how to cook okra. And just learn, choose, choose an ingredient every week to incorporate into your life and learn that it's not so scary to eat these low carb things. When you're making a change and how I reduced my amount of carbohydrates, it was really, okay, I'm eating all these things. Instead of saying, I'm going to cut out everything here, I thought I'm going to add all these new things and then it'll replace all the other things that I don't need to be eating. So you see the difference there? The third step of reducing your carbohydrates is once you feel under control with the first two, let's look at the gluten. Now, gluten is a protein found in cereal grains, specifically barley, rye, oats, and wheat. It is a substance that gives dough its elastic consistency, and as it comes in different forms, it can also be present in grains beyond these four. Now, you might be wondering, what did gluten ever do to me? <laughs> Oh, what hasn't it done? Simply put, if gluten today were the same kind of gluten that was around 50 years ago, our society probably wouldn't even have an issue with it. But the gluten found in the food supply in North America today differs massively from the gluten our grandparents ate. In addition to wreaking havoc on our gut lining, creating inflammation that often spurs other health-related issues... It also affects the way our brains function and our ability to absorb key nutrients. Now, if you're not sure where to start with making the transition away from gluten, my website, healthfulpursuit.com, has over a thousand gluten-free recipes. Now, you're going to find as you start to go keto... A lot of recipes online or in your favorite cookbooks um, won't use gluten. So it's important to start to learn how do I make a pizza crust or, you know, how do I replace buns? And I mean, nowadays in 2020, there are so many options for you. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. Superfat is a certified keto and paleo line of macadamia and almond-based convenient on-the-go nut butter pouches with five different dairy-free flavors. My favorite flavor is cacao coconut, lightly sweet, perfectly salty, and so chocolatey. With 22 plant-based fats, 3 grams of net carbs, 2 grams of sugars with no added sugar, 5 grams of protein, and 6 grams of fiber, I chow down on Superfat. When we're sailing, I pack them in my trail bag. I just started using them for beach volleyball and long flights for easy fat on the go. Each pouch contains about 50% more than other nut butter pouches with healthy plant fats found in super fat support sustained levels of energy, cognition, and mental clarity. Macadamia nuts are found in all flavors and are scientifically proven to help speed up metabolism. And Superfat just launched Cookie Bites in chocolate chip, peanut butter chocolate chip, and snickerdoodle. Now, they're made with dairy, but they sure look tasty and super crunchy. You can use the code LEANNE, all in caps, for 15% off when you go to superfat.com. That's L-E-A-N-N-E -E as the code for your 15% off by going to superfat.com. If you're unsure of the link, you can check out today's show notes at ketodietpodcast.com for all the details. Okay, now the fourth step that I use to stop eating so many carbs is one that you won't come across in many fat burning resources, and it's going completely grain free. Now, while grain consumption is naturally lowered on a ketogenic diet, there are many ketogenic products that rely on grain fibers to adjust the net carbohydrate amount of the final product. And if you're not at all interested in boosting the nutrient density of your diet, you don't really need to care too much about grain-based ba additives. But if your goal is to amp up nutrient intake and heal your body with food, grains gotta go. This is exactly why I say, instead of using monk fruit or xylitol, 
um, start using applesauce and bananas. And yes, there are carbs in those things, but you cannot tell me that that is unhealthy to do. Now, I often hear pronouncements like greens are necessary. You can't get these nutrients from anywhere else. And they give you the fiber that your body needs. In fact, I was at Expo West a couple of years ago with my sister. Now, this was before popcorn was super popular. I think this is around 2015 and popcorn was coming back with a vengeance and on the boom chicka pop. Now, I don't know if it's still on there, but I was sitting next to these women who worked for boom chicka pop and they were talking about grain energy. And my sister and I are just laughing because what's grain energy? And they were going on and on about grain energy. And then the following couple of months, we saw grain energy on the Boom Chicka Pop bag. And we were like, what is happening here? Now, grains aren't the best for us. And you can do a quick Google search and look, why are grains bad for me? Or what do grains do in my body? There's lots of food for thought there. And I really don't have anything to add other than the most important thing for your journey in discovering what works for you, specifically with your keto life, is to add it or remove it and see how you feel. So if you've gone through these steps and you're like, I'm still not feeling great, maybe Leanne's right, maybe I should try to remove grains, you remove grains and you feel so much better. Okay, and then if you don't, try adding them back just slowly and maybe you feel worse right? So just play around with it. It's your body. You get to play around with all of it. And if something doesn't fit, you simply adjust it. It's okay. So let's reiterate before we get into how to introduce more fat. You want to lower your carbohydrate intake with ease. Now this gradual elimination strategy recommends four steps that you can take one at a time over the next four weeks to lower your carbohydrate intake. Now these baby steps will help you approach the changes in a healthy way, avoiding any sense of being restricted and controlled because you don't want to feel that because all you're going to do is binge. And oh my gosh, I can feel you on that. So week number one is getting comfy with sugar-free drinks. Now, this doesn't mean loading up on Diet Coke. If you're a soda drinker, replace it with mineral water and or fresh fruit juices. Squeeze lemon, lime, raspberries. You could add some mint leaves in there. Now, if you normally add sugar to your coffee, you could try alcohol-free stevia. And if you've got a weakness for Gatorade or other energy drinks, you can go to the Google machine and type in rocket fuel latte, which is a great one. Now, week number two is to swap sweets for fruits. Anytime you're craving something sweet, reach for a bit of fruit with a handful of nuts or seeds thrown in to slow down the processing time. Anything goes here. Banana, pineapple, berries, apples, melons, you name it. Now, this is really big for me. When I started eating keto, I was still very, very, very much in love with candy. Candy is kind of my thing. I eat it now and again now, but it's, it's not as pronounced as before. So any time that I was craving candy, I would eat bananas, pineapple. Oh, bananas were my favorite because I would slice them up and then stick a raisin in the middle and then put a walnut on top. So just little things like that to get in the habit of using whole foods is going to be huge. Now, week number three is to introduce yourself to delicious new things, trading in processed foods for fresh And if it comes out of a package box or bag, run away. You likely don't want or need any of it. Try out a cauliflower or zucchini pizza crust. You can also make your own crackers with flaxseed. If you're unsure, just type in Google healthful pursuit flax seed crackers. And there's one there for you. Try your hand at spiral slice zucchini noodles. Now it sounds complicated, but you can use a spiral slice tool and it's the easiest meal like ever. And you can even buy the noodles already spiral sliced at basically everywhere, including Walmart. And week four, get back to your roots. You can swap out grains for root vegetables like sweet potatoes, carrots, parsnips, and squash. Now at the end of week four, sit tight at week four for a couple of weeks or even longer. Really get in the groove of not using sugar, of going for fruit instead of candy, of introducing yourself to new ingredients that are low carb, of swapping out grains and gluten for sweet potatoes, carrots, parsnips, squash. Really what I'm telling you to do is eat paleo for a while before you try out the keto thing. If you've tried keto over and over and you just quote unquote fail at it, 
try a different route. See if by going baby step at it and really creating natural patterns and and natural habits help you in the long run. Today's episode continues after this short message from one of my sponsors who make the show possible, plus give you some great deals on my favorite things. ButcherBox features 100% grass-fed and finished heritage-bred pork and organic free-range chicken. ButcherBox sends you high-quality, health-promoting meats directly to your door on dry ice and free shipping anywhere in the lower 48. ButcherBox makes committing to quality protein sources less expensive and more available to everyone. Their prices are hard to beat, and it's challenging to find a higher quality product anywhere in the USA. I've been using ButcherBox for years and love the convenience of a package showing up just when I need it, and their ground sausage is an absolute dream. ButcherBox has put together a super special deal for all listeners of the show. Order your first box and get a special gift plus an additional $20 off. Now, this special gift is so epic that I can't even mention it on the episode today. So you'll have to go to butcherbox.com slash keto diet to check out the deal plus get your $20 off your very first order. Again, that's butcherbox.com slash keto diet to check out the deal plus get $20 off your first order. If you're unsure of the link, simply check out today's show notes for all the details. Okay, so how do you introduce more fat? There are a number of tricks that I have relied on to boost my fat intake. They include enjoying a fatty coffee daily. Oh gosh, I love the fatty coffee. No, you don't need to go crazy with this. Adding a tablespoon of fat like coconut oil or ghee or butter is enough. It's totally enough. You can also boost your intake with fatty snacks. When you first get started with keto, you're probably going to be hungry like a lot. I know that I was. And there are times, especially when I'm ovulating, where I could just eat every hour on the hour for 24 hours for at least 10 days. My favorite snacks are things like avocado oil mayonnaise with pork rinds. And if you have been a longtime listener of the show, you probably already eat this because it was actually in my intro for the longest time. You can also mix avocado oil mayonnaise with some fresh herbs and use it for dipping like with celery, cucumber, crunchy veggies are really good. A spoonful of macadamia nuts with some coconut oil on top and some salt is really good. You can take a piece of bacon and wrap it around a piece of dark chocolate. You can roll up a slice of nitrate-free meat and low-carb vegetable or guacamole. Hard-boiled eggs are so good and so simple. Dark chocolate with ghee and salt is also really good. Coconut chips, I get mine from Thrive Market. I was not paid to say that. Uh, Tomato slices with olive oil is really good. Um, Seaweed snacks are great. Sometimes I'll like dip in like a nut-based hummus with that. It's really good. Pickles wrapped in prosciutto. Pickles wrapped in bacon. Pickles on their own with mayonnaise. Oh, pickles with mayonnaise and nutritional yeast. We eat a lot of pickles around here. Pork rinds and guacamole, toasted sunflower seeds. Oh my goodness. So many different types of snacks to incorporate fat. But you notice I didn't see any like yucky things, right? These are all natural snacks with lots of whole food nutrients. Also, always have a savory breakfast. If you enjoy breakfast, go for a savory one, like eggs and bacon and asparagus, like something super simple and very savory. It really sets up your day. I know if the first thing I have is a sweet treat, even though it is keto, I kind of like set up the tone to just eat sweet keto treats all day. So you might want to try switching to savory breakfast to see if that helps things. Another one is stick to two oils. Don't get overwhelmed by all of the keto options and all the oils. Stick to two. So one for cooking, one for salads. My favorite mixture is tallow for cooking and olive oil for salads. Or maybe another mixture could be lard for cooking, avocado oil for salads, or coconut oil for cooking and avocado oil for salads. You see? So it's simple. Also choose the fattiest cuts of meat that you can find. Now on page 37 of the keto beginning, I list all of the fatty meats. There are so many um, like salmon, uncured bacon, brisket, chicken thighs, pork shoulder, and a whole bunch of different types of steaks that you can look for. 
And really, you want to surround yourself with high fat foods, like keep it available. You can also check out the shopping list resource on page 83 of the Keto Beginning if you have a copy or decide to get one. And I list all of the high fat foods you could possibly find at the grocery store to help with your shopping. So I hope some of those tips and strategies really helped you get a sense of how to lower your carbohydrates, how to increase your fats, really easy stuff. I think it really comes down to take your time with it. This isn't a race to the finish line. Every moment that you're learning about your body, learning what you like and don't like, what your body prefers is a win in my book. Okay, next up on the podcast, Sunday, March 15th, we have episode 239. My friend Lesia is coming on the show talking about eating keto with a family. And then we have Sunday, March 22nd, episode 240. My friend Jessica Dukes is coming on the show to talk about struggles through keto, miscarriages, fertility, and becoming a mom. Oh, it's a really good episode. Thank you so much for listening and hanging out with me. And I will see you soon. (laughs) Bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor should it be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program. 